So people in this video, let us look at why this anticoantral type of uh, CSOM is very dangerous. Okay, So it is called as dangerous type of CSOM. So what is CSOM? It is uh, chronic superative otitis media, right? M middle ear infection, chronic. That means um, a longer duration. So basically in this you have two types, um, mucosal disease under this chronic otitis media you have two types, you have mucosal and squamous. Okay. So here currently we are trying to focus on this one, the one which is called as uh, aticoantral type. So what they are saying is the squamos, uh, squamosal disease itself is the aticoantral disease. Okay. In this itself, you have the inactive where there is retraction pockets. Okay. So here retraction pockets has been mentioned. Okay. Still wait then. There is no discharge, but there is possibility of squamous debris. Fine. Now there is, this is inactive, right? Because there is no discharge and there is active. So active is with discharge, right? Active is with discharge. Here, there can be a cholesteatoma, a cholesteatoma, uh, presence of cholesteatoma of the posterior superior region of pars tensa or pars flaccida. So, for us, actually, what will come as dangerous is this one. Okay, it erodes the bone, it forms granulation tissue and has purulent offensive discharge. That's why it's active, isn't it? It's, there is discharge. So, if you look at this, the attic perforation, in this one, there is attic perforation, which they have shown in the first one, attic perforation. In B, they have shown double perforation. In the parts tensa, posterior to the handle of the malleus. And in the attic area with destruction of the lateral attic wall. So, this anticoantral type, so basically you should understand what and all are involved here, the, antrum, the attic and the antrum. So, where is the attic? Attic is here and the antrum is here, isn't it? And this is the middle ear. So here, in addition to the middle ear, what is involved? The antrum and the attic, anticoantral type of CSM, um, CSOM, that is uh, chronic superative otitis media or chronic otitis media. So basically, this is a very, uh, it is called as unsafe or dangerous type. Okay, let us see why. So reading this text, you can understand it involves the posterior superior part of the middle ear cleft. This is the middle ear cleft. It is involving the posterior superior part of the middle ear cleft. Right, the attic, the antrum, the posterior tympanum and mastoid and it is associated with cholesteatoma. Okay, and this has bone eroding properties so the ossicles can get damaged. Right, there can be, um, this causes risk of serious complications. Hence, this is called as unsafe or dangerous type. Look at the formation of cholesteatoma here. Right, superior. Behind the tympanic membrane, they are showing the cholesteatoma forming there, right? So, what do, what are the clinical features? First of all, let us look at that. Atico-antral type of CSOM or COM. Now, here, what are the clinical features? First, we will see the clinical features. Then, we will look at the pathology and the complications. So, here, we want to just know why it is so dangerous. So, in this person, there can be ear discharge. Okay. Symptoms will be ear discharge, hearing loss, bleeding. Okay. This, this is what the complaints will come up with. Ear discharge, hearing loss and bleeding. These are the symptoms. The signs that you will elicit. will be perforation. You will see the perforation. Then what and all will you see in this person? Retraction pocket. Right? We saw retraction and pocket in the classification. Remember? Then you will see cholesteatoma. Pearly white flakes of cholesteatoma can be sucked from the retraction pockets. Now let us look at the pathology, the complications you can see. Attico antral type of CSO. That's why we'll know why it is unsafe or dangerous. So cholesteatoma. Right? Cholesteatoma can form retraction pocket cholesteatoma. Osteitis and granulation tissue. These in words are important. 
Zostiitis involves the outer attic wall and the posterior superior margin of the tympanic ring. Everything here, whatever they are saying is posterior superior only, remember that. And here it is bone zostiitis, outer attic wall, okay, of the tympanic ring. Posterior superior margin of the tympanic ring. Posterior, this is posterior and superior. Posterior superior margin of the tympanic ring. A mass of granulation tissue surrounds the area of osteitis. So wherever there is osteitis, there will be some granulation tissue which surrounds the osteitis and it may even fill the attic antrum, posterior tympanum and mastoid. So it can fill the entire area. What and all it can fill? The attic, the antrum, posterior tympanum and mastoid. Wait, where is that left? So what and all they are saying it will fill? The granulation tissue may fill the attic, antrum, posterior tympanum and mastoid. Okay. There can be even a polyp here. Okay, Fleshy red polypus may be seen filling the meatus. meatus. So some fresh, fleshy red polypus. Let's say this is a polypus. Fleshy red polypus can be there. Okay. So we are done with two uh, things. One you should remember with uh, aticoantral type of CSOMA. You should not forget to mention cholesteatoma, then osteitis, then granulation tissue, polyp. Then let's move on. What else can happen? <clears throat> Osse, ossicular necrosis. So the Ossicles. What are the ossicles? The bones. So which are the three bones? The ear ossicles. You have the malleus, the incus and the stapes. Isn't it? So let us see what happens to these all ossicles. There is necrosis they are saying. So basically, they are saying the long handle of the incus. So where is the incus? Incus is here. The long handle, long process of incus, there can be destruction. Okay. There can be uh, involvement of stapes also, say, then handle of malleus also, that's the malleus, malleus handle also, and then entire ossicular chain also, all these three bones can be involved, okay. So what and all will you say, incus, long process of incus, you should not forget, long process of incus, handle of malleus, stapes also, okay. So let's read this again, long process of incus, stapes superstructure, handle of malleus and or entire ossicular chain itself okay so therefore hearing loss is always greater than in disease of tupo tympanic type so in this one in aticoantral type of uh, disease the hearing loss will be more because of this ossicular chain itself getting affected so there is ossicular necrosis there is one strange thing here, okay. So now let us say the malleus, stapes and incus are affected, right. But then there is a cholesteatoma growing here, isn't it? A cholesteatoma is also there here. Let us say there is a cholesteatoma. So what happens sometimes this cholesteatoma compensates for this uh, ossicular chain problem, right. So cholesteatoma, what it does, it bridges the gap caused by the destroyed ossicles and hearing loss may not be apparent. This is called as cholesteatoma hearer. Okay. So there will be more hearing loss in this type. There is an extra thing here called cholesteatoma hearer. So they will be hearing, the hearing loss will not be there because of the ossicle disruption because the cholesteatoma will bridge the gap. Okay. So is the spelling correct? Cholesteatoma. Yeah. So the last point here that you have to know in aticoantral type of CSOM, what exactly the problem here, why it is dangerous, unsafe, cholesterol granuloma. Okay, cholesterol granuloma. So there is another terminology here, cholesterol granuloma. So what are the three terminologies till now we have seen? One is cholesteatoma, then we saw um, granulation tissue and osteitis, osteitis. Then we saw, what was the third one? Ossicular necrosis and fourth one we are seeing is cholesterol granuloma. Now let us understand this. Cholesterol granuloma. Cholesterol granuloma. So some cholesterol deposition, what do you think? Basically, 
there will be some cholesterol crystals okay in the center around it there will be giant cells and granulation tissue also so giant cells foreign what is that word they are telling here foreign body giant cells granulation tissue with foreign body giant cells surrounding cholesterol crystals okay why does all this happen because there will be uh, there could be hemorrhage or some secretions which are long standing in that place because of that there can be this granuloma okay this causes what due to long standing secretion or hemorrhage okay so uh, if the eardrum is intact and this cholesterol granuloma is present in the mesotympanum the eardrum will appear blue okay so this is otoscopic view you can see how the eardrum appears blue cholesterol granuloma so in this video our idea was only to look at aticoantral type of uh, this chronic otitis media why it is unsafe or dangerous that's all we wanted to know so we saw where exactly it is coming in here it is coming as a squamosal disease active cholesteatoma with discharge okay so we saw some images of uh, atic perforation so here what and all is involved in the posterior superior part of the middle ear cleft the attic the antrum posterior tympanum and mastoid are involved it can be associated with cholesteatoma it is it is associated with cholesteatoma okay and it is called as unsafe dangerous because it has bone eroding properties serious complications can be there so the symptoms that patient will come with is ear discharge hearing loss bleeding signs that you will elicit perforation can be there retraction pocket cholesteatoma so what are the complications or pathology cholesteatoma o osteitis osteitis osteo osteo osteitis granulation tissue fleshy red polyps ossicular necrosis more hearing loss than the other types of uh, otitis media right uh, chronic otitis media that is the tubo tympanic compared to that this one will have more hearing loss okay there is something called as a cholesteatoma he hearer where the cholesteatoma kind of bridges the gap which, um, which is caused by the ossicular necrosis cholesterol granuloma where you can see blue eardrum okay see apart from pathology there are some things that are they are telling are complications or the clinical features which indicate complications in atico antral type okay what are the complications or the symptoms of complications let's look at them now pain pain can indicate extra dural perisinus or brain abscess okay so sometimes it can be because of otitis externa which is associated with discharging ear otherwise its presence is considered serious okay vertigo vertigo can indicate that there is erosion of lateral semicircular canals and that may progress to become labyrinthitis meningitis okay so you will do a fistula check to uh, to check this right fistula test so there can be vertigo because of erosion of the lateral semicircular canal you know where they are right so the three semicircular canals they're talking about the lateral most right the lateral semicircular canal okay then moving on persistent headache persistent headache can be there it is a suggestion of intracranial complication so now it reach to the cranium intracranial <clears throat> complication then facial weakness suggestive again here of uh, erosion of facial canal a child which refuses to eat it is easily going to sleep right that will be extra dural abscess child refuses to take feeds and it's always sleeping kind of a thing very lethargic then fever nausea 
vomiting then what else the person can have meningitis that's scary right so there can be irritability neck rigidity irritability neck rigidity this indicates what meningitis so it has reached the meninges then diplopia diplopia means they are seeing double double so that is uh, grade nigo grade nigo syndrome petrocytis right we have a separate video on this grade nigo syndrome you can look at that grade nigo syndrome petrocytis here there are three things right there is a triad okay, let's check that your discharge diplopia retroorbital pain grade nigo syndrome so that can happen because of what aticoantral type of csom then ataxia so ataxia again because of all the balance system affected labyrinthitis cerebellar abscess now now they are telling even the cerebellum got involved okay so all these are affecting the gait ataxia then so here they are telling it is because of labyrinth labyrinthitis cerebellar abscess okay lastly they are talking about abscess around the ear abscess around ear so that will be mastoiditis so now let us say what the complications of uh, aticoantral type of csom are so brain abscess labyrinthitis meningitis then petrocytis grade nigo syndrome cerebellar abscess mastoiditis and we have also mentioned the symptoms that come with these complications okay so that's all for now what else is there we will cover the treatment also